and you're a personal friend, do not go to the primary table and sit down and say, ooh, I know him. Because the house owner may sit there and say, excuse me, uh, John, can you sit back here? The governor just arrived. He says, if you come to the party, it's better you sit in the back and then the host of the party says, oh, John, excuse me, what are you doing back here? Come up at the primary table and you take your seat. Hence the saying where we get it, and it also mentions it in Luke, where the first will become last and the last will become first. So, of course, there's, there's always this know-it-all at the party. He sits there and he says, Yeah, that sounds really great. I think it would be really cool to be at a God party, sitting with God at a table, the creator of the universe and kingdom. And then Jesus says, That's funny that you say that. I have a story about that. This is where we lead into Matthew 22. The parable of the wedding banquet. If you have your Bibles, put them in your hands. If you don't, put your hands in your heart and let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, your word is true. It's holy. It's pure. It's the light and the darkness. It's the salt to the earth. It's the hope for the hopeless. It gives us the insight that we need at all times, no matter where we're coming from. So, mighty God, the creator of this universe, humble us, Father. Open up our hearts. Open up our eyes and our minds and our ears that we may take in the near Word of God, living Word of God. May it be sharper than any two-edged sword piercing directly to the marrow of our bone, not returning void, piercing the darkness. Oh, Heavenly Father, Fill me with your spirit. Break down the hardened of hearts. And teach us of your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 22, verse 1. Jesus starts the story and he spoke, he spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven, hence... The first group of parables are about the new story, the kingdom of heaven. Why is it a new story? Because it's never been told about heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. Now, underline son in your Bible. Who is the son? Jesus. A wedding banquet for Jesus. Who's Jesus getting married to? His church. Just in case you didn't know this, this is not just a story. Because everything in the Bible has a topical meaning, and then it has a mas ilalum meaning, much deeper meaning. And this is a foreshadowing of what is to come when Jesus returns to this earth, after he has risen. He says, I will come back so that I will look for my bride, because I am the bride groom, and we will have a wedding banquet that will celebrate in heaven. Hence, we as the body of Christ is the bride. The church is the bride. Have you ever refer heard as the church being referred to as the bride? This is the reason why. Maybe it'll start to make sense to you tonight. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a king. Who's the king? God the Father. The God the Father who has prepared a wedding banquet for his son Jesus. He said, wait, 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 wait let me make something clear. Who are we getting married to? Oh my gosh, we got to start all over. Who are we getting married to? I know it's 
really hard to say. Just say, Jesus. Kung bisaya ka, Jesus, may ganang kasabot sa'yo bisaya. Who are we getting married to? Jesus. Anybody else? This is not a Mormon wedding. You know what a Mormon wedding is? It means that there's two people getting married to one person. We're not getting married to two people. So let me cut the myth right now. Cut the thick air. There is nobody else. It's Jesus. Jesus. It's not Mother Mary. It's not St. Peter. It's not St. Paul. It's nobody else. Just Jesus. We're only getting married to... Jesus. Just in case we're confused. Just got to set it out right here. Okay? There's only one wedding banquet. And you're only getting married to one person. Who? Jesus. I think you guys got it. We can continue. He sent his servants. What is a servant? He's talking about the angels. He sent his servants, the angels, to those who have been invited to the banquet. Now, who's invited to the banquet? Let's just establish all this first. Israel. Israel is the only one invited to the banquet. You know why? Because they are God's chosen people. God in flesh is Jesus telling the story to the religious leaders that study the law. And he says, let me tell you something. He goes, my father up in heaven is making a royal banquet for a wedding. And he's doing it for me because the people that he sent, his angels, to come down and invite his people, you guys. Now, you can imagine the religious leaders like that. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, we studied this in the law. I remember that. I can imagine them getting all pompous and arrogant and, you know, just kind of building themselves up, maybe sitting a little bit higher in the chair. You know? He sent his servants to those who have been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. Come on. The banquet's ready. But, what? You know why? Jesus is already telling them of what is to come. He says, you are going to refuse me as the Messiah. My chosen people are going to refuse to marry Jesus as the Messiah. Uh, kind of the story got a little... Then he sent some more servants and said... Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fat cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come, the wedding banquet is ready. Woo. That's some good stuff. God's inviting his chosen people. Come on, guys, this is it. I've been preparing this. Come. He's telling the story. She's telling the story. But they paid no attention. Underline with me, no attention. Listen, Christians, so-called Christians, lukewarm Christians, Christians that think you're Christians and you are not, this is you. Has called you and you give him no attention. You sit there and you think that you're better than God. You think that you have something more important in your pompous life that is more important than what God has called you to do. He has sent down his personal messengers, his Holy Spirit, to fill you, to power you, to call you, and you say, I It's not you. Listen, these topics are so relative to today, it's not even funny. They say they paid no attention and went on in their own way. They went to their own fields. They said, you know what, God, I don't got time for you. I am busy doing my career. God, I don't got time for you. Don't involve me. I need to go to school. God, I don't got no time for you. I need to get married first. God, I don't think so. I'm busy having children. God, no, no way. When I have a little bit more money, I might, but not. 
not now. Or you better show up and show me some money before I go. But other than that, you better talk to the hand. I don't got time for you. Sounds like it's some of us. Some of you guys need to wake up because this is about you. Actually, not some of you. All of you need to wake up, including myself. And this is about us. Some of us are telling God, I don't got time for you. Don't bother me. And others are on their business. And sound a little bit rough. God, I know. Wait. I need to focus on making money first. The almighty peso. The almighty dollar. I need to be focused on this, God. When I am blessed in this, then I'll do you. But right now, don't be bothering me. When you bless my business, then I'll bless you, God. Oh, really? For those who have been given little and do well with it, God gives more. He don't work that way. He don't sit there and say, oh, let me bless you and then show me how good you are with me. That's how we think. God, I don't got time for you. No, sir. I'm about my business right now. I'm about my PhD right now. I'm about my career right now. God, don't be messing with me right now. I'm in the groove. Whew. You guys are right on that path. Don't mess with me, God. I need to make the money. Get the house. Get the career. Get the car. See, that's pretty good rhythm, God, huh? Pay no attention to him. Then verse 6 is where it gets really scared. And the rest seized his servants. And the rest of the people took captive of the Christians. Holding them captive of their own words. Holding them captive of their own actions. The ones that love to call Christians hypocrites. These are the ones. God, I don't got time for you. But he's a hypocrite. Do you see him? He's a sinner. I see him at church, and I see him at the whorehouse. Well, how did you see him at the whorehouse? None of my business, but I saw him there. Let me tell you something, guys. Jesus loves the sinner. He hates the sin. Get it through your minds. Jesus loves the sinner, hates the sin. We take Christians captive because we think we're more righteous. Isn't it funny when a Christian falls down and they sin, we don't sit there and say, Oh man, that looks like that hurts. Let me help you up. I got some first aid here. Now we're like, Oh, that hurts. <laughs> nah, no, that really hurts. Nobody look at Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I lost a tooth on that one. That's what we do to Christians, our fellow believers. We condemn them. We push them down. We tell them that how wrong they are according to the law. We tell them all these things. And we take siege to them. The other thing, we mistreat them. We don't treat Christians fairly. I love this one. I love this, what Christians do. Now, I hear this a lot. I know the owners of the mall wouldn't want me to tell this, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Because they're Christians, they get a lot of other Christians that sit there and say, Hey, I have this really cool idea. We're going to do this. And the owners of the mall say, well, it costs this much to rent it. And they're like, well, you're a Christian. You should be giving it for free. No. Business is business. 
Christianity is Christianity. If anything else, Christians should be paying double to bless a Christian. But we live under the principle like, well, since you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, you better be giving it to me free. If that was the case, every Christian that had a restaurant, they would be poor or broke. Especially in the Philippines. Every <laughs> Filipino Christian would be showing up at dinner time. Christian. Just here to get my dinner for free. We mistreat Christians and even some of them kill them. The messengers of God, people kill them. Let me tell you something that's really unpopular to say right now. I don't care. These Muslims that are killing Christians and beheading them in the Middle East, you better be careful. You better not fear man, you better fear God Almighty. Because when God is for us, who can be it against us? I'm telling you something. It's really true. Christians do not cower down in the enemy. We have the victory in Jesus' name. And so these things are even being killed. And I love this. For some of you that are being persecuted by the, the people around you, maybe somebody at Coburg is saying, man, I'm so tired of hearing you talking about Jesus all the time, man. Just shut up. Those verses. Don't tell me you don't like my lifestyle. I'm a lesbian. God loves me. That's right. God loves you. He hates your lifestyle. See, we don't know how to do this as Christians. We don't know how to condemn the lifestyle but love the person. You hear me? You hear me? Some of you guys are... He's talking about lesbians. I didn't know you could talk about lesbians in church. Yeah, I can talk about a lot of things in church. You ready? Masturbation. Perversion. Molestation. All things are applicable to God. And all things fall under His judgment. Just like these. Verse 7. The King, the Creator of the universe, was enraged. He sent His army to destroy those murderers. And what? burn their city. You know why? Because we serve a God of fire. fire. And you know how you atone for sins? With come on. That was, that was like a perfect opportunity. You ready? We'll practice this. And you know how you atone for sins? With fire. Very good. Getting better. Okay? We think we can escape fire. We can't. Let me tell you two roots in this life. Either you're going to pay with your life, with fire, or Jesus has already paid your life with fire. And you've accepted it freely. It's only two paths. Either you're going to pay your life with fire, because sin must be atoned through fire, or you got your fire insurance through Jesus Christ. See, a lot of you guys didn't get that. That's what we call in the state salvation. Fire insurance. Guaranteed not going to hell. Got my fire insurance. For eternity. Continuing on verse 6. I mean verse 8. Then he said to his servants. And this is where you guys come into play. Let's give a little hand. Woo! The Gentiles. The sinners. Rise up, all sinners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. He says, Go to the street corners. Go to the whores. The pimps. The drug pushers, the tax collectors, go to them. He says, you know what? And here's the funny part. All the religious people 
still wrote my book. I think he's had too much to drink. His story just went over the deep end. He's saying the good people are not going to heaven and the bad people are going to heaven. Did you hear that? I can't believe it. He said, yeah, the children of God, you people in here, you refuse them. You're not going. The whores, the tax collectors, they're going. <laughs> Come on, guys, that's really, really crazy stuff. You know the room just got awkwardly quiet. You know? Even you guys, you're like awkwardly quiet. <laughs> he says, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. Anyone you find. Invite them all. Jesus died for all. Invite them all. So the servants went into the streets and gathered all the people they could find. Well, the bad people are going to heaven. Oh, yeah. I'm bad. I wish I could do that. That would have been a lot better if it was smooth. <laughs> See, let me tell you something here, guys. I'm going to really, 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 really scare some of you. It's not the good people. Just the good people. Only the good people that are going to heaven. The bad people are too. In fact, Jesus has a 